Hi and welcome to this last video for trigonometry for the P1 syllabus. In this video we're going to be dealing with quadratic trigonometric equations. So these equations, as you can see from the first one, kind of look like quadratics. So uh, 2 sine squared x minus sine x minus 1 equals 0. So we're solving a trig equation, but we can treat it like a, a quadratic. So in the first one, if I say a is sine x, then we get this equation, 2a squared minus a minus 1 equals 0. So you can use your usual techniques to try and solve these, uh, factorize it. In this case, a lot of them, and most of them in the exam, will factorize nicely, as this one does. So in this case, we've got a equals negative a half or 1. Now, alternatively, you could use a calculator. The uh, FX991ES does this automatically, so you can go straight from here to here. Right, so remember a was sine x, so we've got sine x is minus a half, or sine of x equals 1. So let's deal with each one of these separately. Sine of x equals minus a half, you can see my unit circle. Shift sine negative a half gives me x is minus 30. Now you can see the problem there, minus 30, we only want solutions between 0 and 360. So instead of saying that that angle is minus 30, I'm going to call it 330. Same angle, 360 minus 30. You can see this other angle I've drawn on here, which also gives me a sine value of negative a half. Now just using the symmetry, that angle is 180 plus 30, which is 210. So their angles in the range that we're looking for, so 210 and 330 are two solutions. From the other possible values, sine of x equals 1, there's only one value where the sine value is 1. Remember sine value is on the y-axis, and that is 90 degrees. So there we've got our three solutions for this equation. So this example is a little bit trickier. We've got cos squared minus 1 equals sine x. So we've got a mixture of sine and cos terms here. So we're going to use our identity cos squared plus sine squared equals 1 to help solve this here. The trick here is recognizing which one to, to substitute for. Uh, there's no identities for sine x. It's sine squared x and cos squared x that we can rearrange this identity for. So I'm going to replace the cos squared x with 1 minus sine squared x. That's my first step right there. Okay. Now we've got a quadratic, all in terms of sine x, which is important. We can't do these if there's a mixture of sine and cos terms. Okay, so on the left here, 1 minus 1 just cancels out 0. We've got minus sine squared x, so I've added that over to the right-hand side, giving me this equation here, sine squared x plus sine of x. There's a common factor here of sine of x, sine of x brackets sine x plus 1, that's the correct factorization. So either sine x is 0 or sine x plus 1 is 0. So if sine of x equals 0, we've got 0 degrees, or 0 radians in this case, and sine of x equals minus 1, if you think of your unit circle, minus 1 on the y-axis is 3 pi over 2 or minus pi over 2. Given what the range is up here, from minus pi to pi, we want to give that answer as minus pi over 2. So here's our last one, 2 sine x, 10 x equals 3. So the answer's in radians between minus pi and pi. All right, just like when we're uh, proving identities, if you see a tan x, replace it with sine x over cos x is a good way to go here, particularly since we've already got some sine x terms in here. So replace tan x with sine x over cos x. Remembering when you're multiplying a fraction, you just multiply by the top line here if you've got something out the front. So 2 sine x times sine x gives me 2 sine squared x on the top over cos x equals 3. Get rid of the fraction, so times both sides by cos x gives me this. And now I've got, like I had in my last example, a mixture of, of sine and cos terms. In this case, I'm going to replace the sine squared with 1 minus cos squared. That's the important one right there. Expand out the brackets, put everything over to the right-hand side. We've got a trig uh, equation, but it's a quadratic with the cos squared. Now, you could, if you wanted to, say something like let a equals cos x, and then you'd have an equation 2a squared plus 3a minus 2 equals 0. Or, if you like, you can go straight to factorizing it. So I've factorized this quadratic correctly here. So we either want 2 cos x minus 1 equals 0, or we want cos x plus 2 equals 0. So in other words, we want cos of x equaling a half, or cos of x equaling minus 2. Hopefully you can see that you're not going to get any solutions from this part. If you think of a unit circle, values on the x-axis for cos, the lowest value we can get is minus 1, the highest value is 1. 
there's no angles that are going to give us a cos value of minus 2. So we're just trying to solve cos of x equals a half. So unit circle again, shift cos on my calculator. If you've got your calculator in the right mode, it'll give you 60 degrees or pi over 3. There's one solution. And the other angle down here is minus pi over 3. Now, if the answers were asking between 0 and 2 pi, then I would have said that this angle is 2 pi minus pi over 3, which would be 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. That would be my other solution. But this question here is asking for answers between pi and minus pi, so I'm going to give this angle here as minus pi over 3.